All right. Well, hey, adventurers, and welcome to Adventures in Podcasting, episode eight. Here with Nick, the uh, operator at Outdoor Extreme Hudson. What's up, bud? How's it going? Nice to be here. Good to meet you. Thank you for inviting me up. Well, I haven't met you yet, I guess, technically, but <laughs> there you go. Thank you, thank you. So if you're drinking with us at home, we're having the greatest beer in the world, Hockershore. And uh, I'm, I'm going to be smoking my Camacho Corojo here. But uh, so, Nick, I uh, I was able to talk to you just a little bit <laughs> the first time I was there at uh, Outdoor Extreme mm-hmm. Hudson. And uh, you seem like a pretty interesting person because you're, like, brand new to Florida. Yes. So yes. I don't think anybody here has even seen your face yet. You're yes. Like a brand I, new am, uh, I am from Texas, and I've been in Florida since uh, the beginning of October. Perfect. So. Yeah. Texans are our cousins. Yeah. yeah it really, it really, like, the weather's the same. Mm-hmm. Uh, the people are the same. Uh, the only thing that is different here is y'all have much more interesting uh, plants and animals. The trees are the same. Other than that, yeah. plants and animals are different, though. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, we've got more jungle wildlife and stuff like that yes but um, you know you still have sea turtles yeah on, on those beaches there that's one thing we share mm-hmm. for sure so when did you come here to florida or what brought you here to florida so it was actually the job um i've worked at a field in uh houston texas for the past uh, four or five years you want to name uh, it it was it was tanks paintball Tanks paintball. Tanks paintball, and they also do airsoft there. Um, we had a, a very large airsoft community there. Um, we would routinely have uh, you know two hundred people um, on our airsoft days. Really, so, mm-hmm. that's quite a during. Bit. It's kind of kind of seasonal over there as it is down here during the summer. It slows down. Yeah, uh, but you know during the cooler months we'd hit yeah. you know, 150, 200 people all the time. So yeah, I can see that it's it's hard when uh, when that heat's beating down on yeah. you. Yeah. We have uh, we have all experienced that from time to time, have we not? <laughs> so, uh, so from what I understand, you're more of a, uh, a paintballer than an airsofter. Yes. So I, I so uh, you're kind of our first paintballer here. I am. I am. That's um, awesome. Last week we had our first speed softer. Mm-hmm. Now we have our first paintballer. Yep. And uh, I'm curious about um, you know what it feels what what. It, what you see are the similarities between mm-hmm. paintball and airsoft? Well, I, I see a lot of similarities. Um, I always call them uh, cousins. You know, mm-hmm. um, I don't uh, like the divisiveness between the two that happens sometimes. Um, I actually have a patch here that I don't know what you think about it, but it says airsoft because even paintballers need heroes. Yeah, and like like I, I, that stuff like that's cool. Like I love poking fun at each other. Like there's nothing okay. wrong with that. But I, like because I felt like that was good nature. Yeah, yeah, like that's good nature. I want the paintballer and version of that to put right next to it. Yeah, like I love stuff like that. But uh, there's a, there's there's so many people who uh, who are just die hard one or the other. And it's you know for me, look, I'm a paintballer. Um, I've tried airsoft. I enjoy airsoft. I think there's a lot of merit to airsoft. But at the end of the day, I'm a paintballer. There's you nothing know? wrong with that. Yeah. And you know, but it's, it's all shooting sports. That's exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. It's all the same thing. So, and, um, and that's why I like, I love, um, supporting it. Cause for, for paintball was important, uh, for my development growing up. So, okay. Um, so I love providing that for other people, whether it's paintball or airsoft. It's all the same. Yeah. I mean, we often share fields, mm-hmm. you know, um, yep. You know, not at the same time, yeah. but, you know, different sections of yep. the same field for sure. And um, I've always seen, like, the paintballers stare at us yeah. a lot because yeah. they're looking at our guns and yeah. stuff like that. And I know you guys are looking at me like, it's so cool. Yeah. Why don't you guys ever come up and talk to us and, and play with them? Like, and we'll, we will definitely let you finger our guns. And, and that's the Nothing paintballers else. being you know nothing basically that's them doing what they shouldn't do you know we should all be friends we Mm -hmm. should all be talking to each other asking each other about each other's gear yeah um that was something that airsoft definitely went y'all's gear is way cooler than paintball gear you know i think a lot of paintball gear is of higher quality but y'all have way more diverse selection right and y'all have way cooler shit because it's all like it's it's all different you know yeah like i mean just look at the wall behind me it's a perfect example well, you look at, at paintball gun walls, and it's like, well, that's a pretty color. Right. You know? <laughs> I've actually, uh, I've seen a place, a gunsmith, that turned a paintball gun yeah. into a 9 millimeter. Really? Yeah, hmm. which was interesting. Yeah. And um, 
I really wanted to shoot it yeah. just to see what it felt like, but I've never shot a paintball gun before. Really? So I feel like, hmm. yeah, no, there's, there is going to be a day where I play paintball for sure. It's probably going to be an outdoor extreme because, awesome. uh, you know, it's 20 minutes from here. <laughs> <laughs> I look forward to it. Yeah, it's pretty much yeah. going to be my home field. One day when we have a big event or something, you'll have to come down and play. Yeah, I'd like to, because Magfed Otter, somebody who I was mm-hmm. trying, he's still not able to come on next week yeah. either. He's, you know, he's got kids. Do you know Magfed Otter? I... <sighs> I think so. Yes, yes. He was at a. Uh, he was at the Magfed um, uh, meetup. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, I he do took know pictures that. and stuff yes. like that. There, he. Um, he was, I was hoping to get him on next week, yeah. but like he keeps having a delay because he got kids. He does the Magfed paintball and airsoft too, right? right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he does. He basically does speed soft mm-hmm. and, but like that's that's like you and I were saying earlier, yeah. talking about how. Um, I, I I would like for you to share that with yeah, the the, the group here. The um, Apparently, in paintball, there are differences in paintball, just like we have an airsoft, where we there's basically a milsim form of paintball, and then there's a speed soft form of paintball. I didn't know that until about 20 minutes ago. Yeah. So, so 10, 15 years ago, there was very um, clearly defined battle lines between what was called speedball and woodsball. And speedball is tournament paintball, where they're playing on the inflatable bunkers and stuff. And then woods ball is, of course, you know, guys playing in the woods. Right. And you have just like an airsoft where you guys have the big, uh, uh, big events. They also have that in woods ball, and that's that's what I I play. I used to play tournaments, but I mainly play the scenario paintball now, which is the big events like they have, um, uh, like the mini Milson that they had at Outdoor Extreme Orlando recently. Okay, and that's so, where you would use the mag fed stuff, and that's where mag a lot of mag fed paintball and stuff comes into play. Okay, um, and they were like I said, so they were pretty, pretty. Uh, clearly defined battle lines between the two and um, over the years they have very much uh, blurred um, there's there's a hybrid player when you go to these big events now like obviously you're not going to see a mill simmer on a tournament field you know mm-hmm. it, it's, it's a very specific style of play there but when you go to these big events you're starting to see a lot more speed ballers at these milsim style events right um and i see so many similarities with airsoft with the speed soft versus milsim it's the same same argument and i think you're already starting to see more of that hybrid style of play yeah. and more hybrid players you know yeah i love um, it dude I absolutely do because I mean I don't I know you're new to the community yeah. we've got uh, a, another YouTuber named Mini Dom okay he plays at BTA quite a bit mm-hmm. I don't know if he's going to be at BTA or Deviate now that they've you know split yeah. ways and mm-hmm. there's two different fields you know but I'm sure he's going to get to all of them yeah. but um, he is what I would consider a hybrid player because yeah. he does the Milsim stuff but he's also on Team Obey yeah. which is the CIA house team mm-hmm. so you know, seeing his play style, like he's quick, he's tactical and stuff like that. And I bet he brings that into the woods when he plays too. He absolutely yeah. does. And uh, he brings that to Milsims mm-hmm. too. That's what we were talking about, yep. trying to get more speed softers to come to Milsims. Yep. I would love that. I've uh, Last week, Slaughterhouse was on. Oh, this should be out by <laughs> before. This should be out after the Slaughterhouse one. But he was talking about wanting to do Milsims mm-hmm. again because he, he and I used to play at Holy Cows. Yeah back before you know they destroyed the the maze and mm-hmm. took away our chance of meeting each other on the field yeah you know because otherwise i'd pick him off from like a mile away <laughs> just because he's got the little gun yeah the big one you yep. know but uh but yeah i would love to see more speed softers uh getting into it yep. and uh there's there's a game at uh are you familiar with hefez yet i know i'm dropping a lot of names on you mm-hmm. So Hefez, he's down in Southeast Florida. Okay. Uh, Hefez up uh, Airsoft Solutions, I think is the full title of it. Okay. He specializes in building AAP01s. Okay. And um, he hosts a game where it's a uh, seven-man tournament where you, it's basically seven versus seven okay. in a uh, like a like a bomb type scenario where you yeah. have to guard a bomb, take a bomb, stuff like, like that. Like search and destroy. Like I'm, oh, yeah. Okay. So my idea for that is to get a hybrid team. Okay. Where we have like three, three speed softers. Cause you definitely need them running around yeah. yanking people. Absolutely. 
a couple mill simmers or, yep. or just three three of them and four mill simmers, something mm-hmm. like that, and you know, get them to work together. Yep. Because I have a feeling like if you have that kind of thing, it's it's like the nineties, man. When you get hybrids, you rule everything. And and that's kind of where like whenever you go to these uh, these big scenario paintball games and you get those hardcore tournament players that show up, we're so used to them now. Yeah. It's just like you're a killer, go get them. Yeah, you exactly. know. <laughs> yeah, that's how I feel with uh, about with a lot of the speed stop. It's mm-hmm. like they're just going to run straight in and there. Harness that. You, uh, mm-hmm. If you're if you're a Milson team, pick up a few speed softers. Harness them, you yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, don't try to t- change them into Milsimers. Yeah. Just have them use their style yep. at a Milsim. Absolutely, because their style, you know, it's it's applicable for Milsim standards. Yep, I think just you know spamming the trigger won't do you very and, much good because you you have limited ammo. And I, I think there's definitely a place for super hardcore like role playing events, like like um, uh, Milsim West mm-hmm. or the American Milsim events. Um, we're like, I you know. Maybe you shouldn't be doing that. I get you know? it, <laughs> but but for the for these local and regional events, like mm-hmm. why would you turn away people that play the same game as you? You know, I, I'm right there with you. Yeah. You know, that's that's why after my little hiatus here, I'm going to be really reaching out to all the speed softers yeah. at every event I go to because there's a couple teams that mm-hmm. I like, like DTB, yeah. uh, Obey. Yeah, um, God, there's another one too. But I think he actually just got out of out of airsoft mm-hmm. to go to college or something. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. There's too many people on social media that I follow, and, it's, yeah. and all the stories get mixed up. But um, so I'm curious: is uh, you know what what is it like to run a field? You're the first field runner here, as well as the first paintballer. It, it is something different every day, right? Because you're not the owner so, of Outdoor Extreme. Yeah, there are Outdoor Extreme is more like a franchise. Yeah, ours. yeah. So we're the uh, the sixth field. Okay, so, where are the other fields for our? Uh, so they have two in Pennsylvania, one in Maryland, um, one in New York, and then the two in Florida. So, so they're all East Coast. Yeah, all East Coast. Um, they really picked up the one in Hudson so that Orlando would kind of have a sister field. Um, because, like, with our um, um, our season pass that we do, you get access to all of our fields, which didn't really work out with Orlando being down here by themselves. Right, I get so, that. So, yeah, so they wanted them to have a, a, someone to hang out with, basically. So. Okay. <laughs> so this is the first... Um, because CIA, they don't have like a season pass. So they yeah. you, you know, buy a membership for mm-hmm. a year. Well, how much is a season pass for Outdoor Extreme? Uh, so we have a bunch of different packages, and uh, we have a, a three month, a six month, and a year package. Um, the year package is two fifty, if I remember right off the top of my head. Okay. And uh, you'd have to look on our website for the uh, the other prices. So. <sighs> okay, and that just includes admission. Yeah, it's free entry. Um, well, so actually, I realized that is the. Um, uh, those are the paintball prices. We have different. We have an airsoft season pass as well, and I don't know the price off the top of my head. Oh, it should definitely be cheaper. I, 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 uh, <laughs> it's one. Now I want to look it up really quick for it being new. Right, I can look it up really quick. Right, I'll gym the camera. But uh, but yeah, I wouldn't mind. Uh, I wouldn't mind grabbing one of your rentals sometime and running out there and uh, some paintball for paintball. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Because I feel like your first time in any of these sports, you should have a rental. I agree. Going out there so, with a highly upgraded gun, you got to earn that. It's two twenty five for the uh, um, the twelve admissions. So that's admissions. Uh, admissions all Saturday and Sunday. Walk on plays um, doesn't include events and stuff. Okay. So, so you're going to be having events there. Yes, we will be having events there. Um, we are already talking to some people about coming and running events um, at the facility. Um, okay. We have some work that we want to do. Um, like if, you, if you have been to the field already, um, we want to work on getting rid of the trailers and yes. building a new field there, yes. um, which will significantly improve our ability to run events. So. Yeah, I mean, the only way to use those trailers would be to just you know take them off. Yeah, the chassis and drop the just the frame of it down. Uh, even those, otherwise, you're falling through it. Even even those are because um, there's holes in the side of the walls yeah. and stuff. Yeah. So that was whenever as soon as we took over the property, uh, that was the first thing we did. I don't let anybody play in or around them at all. Yeah, it's a death <laughs> trap. Yeah. Yeah, you get scraped there. You better hope you have that that shot. Otherwise, yeah. you're, you're be talking like this. Yeah, it's just it's Why unfortunate that uh, it kind of cuts our field in half. So that's the biggest thing right now. So right. once we get rid of them open us up and we'll be able to do uh, much bigger events. Yeah, and you wanted to keep basically the same layout of 
mm-hmm. of the trailers that were there. I think you were telling me. Yeah. So when the trailers were playable, um, it was the most popular field. Um, everybody wanted to play it. It was it was the field that you had to be like, no, like we built the other fields for a reason. Like you need to go play them at least right. once. You know, um, yeah, everybody was my favorite. You like the the mounds field? Yeah, I oh, love the mounds. I thought that was really fun. It, well, it's unique. Yeah, I like okay. unique. I and like things that are different. That's funny because that's a staple in paintball. Really, the mounds field and hyperball fields are old school like traditional fields of people. I was telling Slaughterhouse yeah. about those and he was like bro that'd be perfect yeah I was like yeah well there's two fields I, th- I think they're right next to each other right yeah <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well whenever we build um, um, so there's that little bit of a gap where the um it was like that dead area in between hyper and mouse. Yeah, it feels like a walkway. Almost. Also, going to build another um, kind of fast paced, uh, like speed soft style field in that open area right there by the entrance. That'd so, be perfect. Yeah. Because, I mean, you got a lot of speed softers mm-hmm. at CIA. They yep. would love to play outside occasionally. Yep. You know, definitely play at CIA. Mm-hmm. You know, but now you have another option, which is always good in our, <laughs> in our industry when uh, Absolutely. you see fields getting shut down and having problems opening and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Just feels good to have another one open up and have you come over here and be like yeah you know we're building <laughs> yeah it's <laughs> we're making it better it, it's a great facility um the property is beautiful i know um, i it love just it needs, just needs a little bit of work you know yeah and you have actual toilets there yeah like yeah. that's indoor bathrooms, shocking well, indoor me. bathrooms <laughs> yeah i told uh i forgot to tell koi about that because his girlfriend comes with him all you met mm-hmm. koi yeah he's a guy with me yeah he's a really cool guy yeah i love that guy and uh he his, set me up with the server and his or the uh, uh channel with discord and stuff oh that. perfect yeah koi pond yeah mm-hmm. join the koi pond if you haven't that's yep. a that's a great discord server for uh for airsofters pretty much I, I guess for pretty much whoever but yeah definitely uh, active though people are posting it all the time i know i i used to I, there's just so many social media things yeah you have the same problem i have <laughs> I understand that where it's just like oh my gosh you get so many updates plus like i'm, I'm doing the facebook dating thing yeah so like i get like 10 likes a day <laughs> but only like I don't know, two of them are real people. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I actually, side note, I actually got a, uh, I was talking to this, uh, this chick, Asian chick mm-hmm. for, for context here. And, uh, you know, after talking for a while, she's like, have you spoken to many, uh, Asian chicks on mm-hmm. here yet? And like, well, yeah, I have, but, uh, you know, most of them turn out to be scammers though. Never heard from her again. <laughs> but then, right after that, there was like a flood yeah. of these AI generated Asian chicks. They were because um, you can tell by their faces, like it's 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 a face that's superimposed on mm. somebody else's body. Yep. Like it's clear because I do editing and stuff, but I don't do Photoshop. Mm. But like you can still tell the outline is messed up. Stop doing that. That's messed up. <laughs> They're not watching. Thank God. But um, so have, uh, you're new to Florida. Yep. What, what have you done here so far besides uh, working at Outdoor Extreme? Not much. Um, Building stuff? Yeah, just uh, trying to get the field in order. Um, the first few months were consolidating what we had, figuring out what we had, um, and just kind of clean up. That's kind of been the name of the game since we took over in October. It's been looking great. I mean, I only played there one day, but it was I got to see every field pretty much. Well, now we're, now we're kind of switching gears into progress you know the the um catching up is done um, yeah. now we're going to start you know actually building new fields and hopefully knocking out some of the bigger projects so, that's beautiful yeah. yeah you should um you should definitely get with danny he's the owner of bta okay and because uh, I know you were talking about uh, doing Friday night games and putting up like string lights and yes, stuff like that, yes. like I would love to get lights up on the field. <sighs> he needs to do the same thing too, <laughs> yeah. and maybe you guys can work together, and become friends, and then we have a we have another brother sister thing here. I, I have heard nothing but good things about Black Tiger. Um, it's a great I'm, field. When I do finally get a chance to go out and play, um, I want to. I'm going to do a, a paintball outing or. A spend a weekend kind of going around to the different paintball fields and then I want to do the same thing for Airsoft where I, I spend a Saturday and Sunday kind of going around and checking out different fields. Yeah, I highly and, recommend going to Warzone. Warzone? Yeah, Wayne's World of Paintball. 
Oh, okay. They share the same field. Deadpool. Okay, okay. I'll be going there for paintball for sure. I didn't know they did airsoft there as well. Yeah, so. yeah. Deadpool runs the paint. Uh, he runs the airsoft there on Saturdays. Okay. And I think they do paintball Saturdays and Sundays. Okay. I, mean, I think airsoft is only Saturdays. Deadpool is a great guy. Mm-hmm. He's he's one of those you know patron saints in airsoft. Mm-hmm. He's you'll love him when you meet him. Okay. He he literally. He said they go on Saturdays. I'll go. I'll go to Wayne's World on a Saturday then, so I can try to hit him up for both. Yeah, that that way you can at least meet Deadpool. Because mm-hmm. he'll be uh, he'll be doing the the airsoft side, mm-hmm. but um, there's that and there's Clearwater Paintball. They're on the list as well. Yeah, they're fantastic. Mm-hmm. Beyond that, I mean, I don't know too many other airsoft slash paintball fields that I've been to. Well, I guess I'll be going to uh, uh, La Plan at least. Um, I've got a whole list, you know. Yeah. Uh, CIA, um, Holy Cows, Black Tiger. Um, yeah, those are all airsoft. Yeah, I know. There's there's a few other on my list as well. But. Yeah, you got to check out Wasteland Ops okay. as well. Um, Paul, Ron, Joe, all great people. Yeah. You know, one of the things that um, that I want to do with this podcast is unite all of you field operators, owners, managers, yep. refs, whoever is getting all this stuff together, the promoters too. Yeah. Just get you guys together and talk because we've had some instances in our community where beef has been brought up because people just weren't talking and communication solves 90 percent of problems it's yeah you know? probably more than 90 yeah. percent i mean that just you know putting your ego aside for a little bit and yep. understanding like somebody else might be right yep you might be wrong who knows absolutely but i would love for you know since you're an operator mm-hmm. here well we got to get something together we have a giant dinner yeah or something absolutely. like that i'd love to uh, that's the whole point of going around to all these different fields right. so that i can meet everybody you know because i'm the newcomer here yeah. right and uh i am going to give a uh, free plug mm-hmm. for matt and matt but uh striker airsoft industries absolutely i've been talking with them and uh, we're hoping to get something worked out with them soon okay good i was hope. I, well i was hoping i was going to be the one to broach this topic <laughs> but i guess they they did their jobs first but well, uh, he's been doing stuff with uh, desi at outdoor exactly. uh, extreme orlando yeah so. yeah and he was uh, i sent him pictures mm-hmm. of the field and stuff like that and he was like it looks great but it needs striker gear yeah I'm like yeah of course you're the owner of striker air <laughs> Soft says there should be striker gear there. Come on, man. But uh, but yeah, I I would like to see that. You know, that's that's another form of unity is if we can all have like the striker airsoft gear at all yep. of our fields. If we can all, if we have an AAP01, you send it to Hefes. You let him do it because that's who specializes in it in Florida. You know, I think we have people in these niches here yeah. that really need to be utilized more. It's the community. Yeah. yeah, but I would, I would love, I would love to get you together with a couple of the other field owners at some uh, some dinner or something. Absolutely. I am planning on having a uh, a range day. Mm-hmm. I have access to a private gun range. Okay. So if you like shooting real steel, yeah, I am looking to get at least the people from the podcast there, so we yeah. can all shoot and make a, a vlog or something okay. like that. Okay. Because it's it's great. I mean, season that, one reunion tour. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Uh, God, what was that? How many how many episodes would be a season of a podcast? I don't know. Huh. That's a good question. I'll Google that when we're done. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> I'll, I'll, you know. <laughs> and if there's no answer, we'll ask Chat GPT. Yep, it'll, they will it'll come up with the an answer, answer for us. <laughs> yeah. But um, so have have you have you played anywhere yet, or have you only been working around here? Um, I the only field I've played um, is outdoor extreme Orlando. Um, I played there last March. Yeah. Um, for their Jurassic event, um, which is a paintball event. Yeah, I saw that. It looked mm-hmm. cool. It's a great event. Yeah. Um, Desi and his wife hold fantastic events. Uh, Jenny. Uh, Desi and Jenny hold amazing events. Yeah, I haven't um, met his wife yet, but... She's awesome. I've she's, seen... Her. Yeah, she's the nicest person ever. Yeah, I follow him on Facebook. Yeah. He's, he's a good husband. Yeah. You're, you're a good husband to her. I, I need to uh, uh, take some social media notes from him. He's oh, yeah. a social media titan. Yeah, <laughs> we all do. You know... I'm one of those people since I'm in social media yeah. like I, I look at the like myself compared mm-hmm. to other people he doubles everything I do yeah like I'll, I'll do a post and mm-hmm. make something I'll get like 30 likes or something it's just consistency yeah, yeah. it is consistently mm-hmm. I get at least 15 for everything there, there are definite people that follow stuff but yeah. Desi just has more interesting stuff like he's painting masks and he's got <laughs> like he's got no problems taking selfies the last selfie I took it looked like I was doing the looks max thing oh yeah, yeah. you're like but I was literally chewing while <laughs> taking a photo. It was just stupid of me. But looking back on it, it looked like I was trying to make that Chad face. 
but uh, so what did you think about Outdoor Extreme versus uh, any of the other fields that you played at so far? So they're a fantastic field. Um, I, I, I think we had, I think, 600 plus players at that event, and the field handled it great. Um, and that it didn't feel like you were uh, overrounded. People. And there's there were definitely times when there was, you know, 100 versus 100 in a small area, but it didn't feel crowded. That's you know, cool. yeah. yeah, it was so much fun. It field, is a huge field. They have a ton of camping space. They have the field plays amazing. And from what I've been told is it's basically two fields in one. Um, when it's wet and all their creeks fill up, it plays completely differently. Because when I was in there in March, it was dry. Yeah. And so you're using the creeks as, as trenches, basically. Um, whereas when it's it's wet and those creeks fill up, you're looking for, you know, anywhere close enough that you can jump across or right. you're fighting for the bridge crossing. You right. know? <laughs> I played it when it was wet. You did? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And that was... And is, that, is that an accurate statement? Fighting yeah. for the bridge crossings? Yeah, because, I mean, you, you can cross, mm-hmm. but... But, I mean, for one thing, a lot of people don't want to get their feet wet. Yeah. You know, we're, we're, all, we're out there to have fun, you know. <laughs> but uh, you never know, too. If you step on it, you don't know how deep it is, really. Yeah. You know, especially if you're not a, 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 a frequent player there. Yep. If you're seeing it for the first time, you're like, yeah. But there are plenty of places where you can jump across. We can jump across because we're regular-sized okay. okay. people. But you smaller guys, stop joking. <laughs> 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 uh, I, uh, sometimes you got to make short jokes. Another tangent, I have been talking to this chick on uh, Facebook dating. <laughs> and I don't know if you've are are you married? Or are you dating? Are you uh, married? Engaged. Engaged. Yeah. Okay. Well, congratulations. Thank you. But uh, I don't know if you ever did the online dating stuff. Like a lot of the chicks, when they Once reach out, time. they're like, "Hey, you know, you're so I love how tall you are." Yeah. So now every time when they say, "I love how tall you are," like, "Hey, I like how short you are," and now you know. It, it we does, do though. We do like how short you are. <laughs> for some reason, I was talking to my buddy um, Joker, yeah. Joker Boy, about this. Guys our size, for whatever reason, like if a chick is over five five, it's like, meh. yeah. But if they're under five five, it's like, okay, yeah. I can work with that. There, there's a lot of things I can do. That. It's the juxtaposition. I yeah. know. It's the fun part of it. Yeah. And uh, you know, camping wise, you know, you definitely share a two person tent. <laughs> with, uh, with a smaller lady yeah, that's true. You know, if I was with a lady my size like yeah we need a four person tent <laughs> <laughs> we, need some, we need some elbow room in there but uh, you know, speaking of tents I know uh, you were talking about wanting to go backpacking Yes, yes. So that's something that I've been interested in for a long time. And uh, whenever I was moving here, that was something that uh, that stood out to me was the amount of uh, hiking trails and stuff you guys have. Around. Everywhere, yeah. everywhere. I'm, yeah. I'm finding new ones here mm-hmm. in uh, the Brooksville area. Yeah. And uh, I just walked one uh, yesterday. Yeah. You know, you saw the photos mm-hmm. and everything. And uh, it's it's cathartic, dude. Mm-hmm. Like that's not backpacking. Yeah. It's just hiking like five yeah. miles. But backpacking is a whole different experience. Yeah. Like it's it's almost spiritual in yeah. a way because you're getting back to nature yeah. and you're worried about stuff like water. Yeah. Like here, like if you're worried about water, you go to the sink. Yeah. Out there, you got to go find it, and then you got to filter it, and you got to wait, yeah. or you got to boil it, and then. Wait for it to cool or uh, get tough and drink it hot. <laughs> yeah, I've been watching um, a few different um, uh, people on like their Triple Crown uh, adventure. Okay, and those are uh, those are wild. Yeah, like they, like you said, getting back to nature and mm-hmm. like truly having to think like, okay, you know, should I grab that extra bottle of water here, mm-hmm. or is the weight going to be unnecessary? Exactly. You know? Um, There's like a lot of become real questions. You know, yeah. you think, well, of course I'd grab the extra water. Of course I would, just because you're not carrying, you know, you're not carrying water that far. Exactly. You know? <laughs> and you know, I've I've definitely gotten at points where we picked up water, and I was like, I don't feel like carrying this anymore. So yep. I just sat down, and I chugged it. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> or you know, just kind of spilled around. You know, pour it on your head, cool off, or yep. something like that. Yeah, you can find of, a use for it. But. Yeah. Yeah, but um, you're not the first person to talk about wanting mm-hmm. to go backpack here i feel like everybody i talk to and, yeah. and airsoft and now paintball well we, we could go to the gun range and then we could go on a, on a hiking trip i'm down with that you know the gun range it's at my uh my ancestral homestead okay essentially okay. one of the houses there was built by al capone okay <laughs> yeah That's some nice little fun fact yeah so no digging okay yeah just no digging that's that's our, our family rule don't dig 
just let it stay there. It's not ours. It is. <laughs> yeah, it's not ours. Leave it. But, uh, but yeah, that would be great. I, I was talking to Tori today about doing a hike. Yeah. Um, I think I told you about it, doing a 61-mile mm-hmm. hike. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, what um, was the name of the trail? I think it's called uh, Lake to Sea Trail. Yeah. It's part yeah. of the Florida... Uh, it's part of the Florida Trail. Okay. So, like, there's the Appalachian Trail, and then mm-hmm. there's the Florida Trail. Okay. The Florida Trail is obviously shorter. Yeah. But depending on, you know, what season you hike it in, you're yeah. probably going to be in, like, shit deep water. And that's no fun. You need that beer? I, I have seen videos of people um, in the shit deep water in the middle of the Florida Trail. So oh, I, yeah. I've seen videos of that. Um, yeah. Would you like me to put this? Anywhere. Okay. I'll, I'll clean up afterwards. Here. I'm not too fancy. Thank you. Thank you. Matter of fact, I'm going to finish this and get me one. Yeah, I kind of forgot I had it first. I'm going to have to spend a minute looking at all your patches. Yeah, there's a bunch of them up there. I mean, you'll get to know, like, everyone here yeah. eventually. I hope so. Come see us, y'all. The fun thing about this there's wall. Hefe. Yeah, there's Hefe right there. Yeah. That's his Halloween edition patch, which is my favorite <laughs> holiday. <laughs> Speaking of holiday, holiday is a guy you need to meet. Holiday? Yeah. Where are you from? Uh, he usually plays at BTA. Okay. But um, he seems to be a person that comes up on every podcast, mm-hmm. so I feel like i got to mention him here. But he's one of those people that um, he dresses up silly all the time. I love that. Like when that cocaine bear stuff came yeah. out, he he went out playing in like cut-off jean shorts. I love that. And he had like flour <laughs> that he just like sneaked yeah. into his face and then shoot at people. <laughs> How could you not like that? I love that. One, one of my one of my favorite um, uh, former teammates um, used to play paintball with him, and he would uh, ever do the final battle mm-hmm. at the end of those big scenario games to gather everybody up on one field and just do like a big crazy final battle. Yeah, you know, um, with everybody a chance to waste their ammo, last bit of energy, you know, final hoorah! Sounds awesome. And uh, but he would always dress up as Master Shake. And he was a big guy. Master Shake. He was a big guy. And the Master Shake costume was a few sizes too small. But it made it that much better. So you know? there's a guy at BTA does the same thing. Yeah. Where he dresses like a banana. Yeah, I love it. And then he just banana jokes yeah. constantly. <laughs> like, hey, guys, uh, I hate to tell you this, but I got to split. <laughs> there's Okay, okay. so since we're telling uh, the dress-up stories, there's a team in uh, Houston Um I am drawing a blank on their name for this, and they're going to uh, they're going to give me shit for this. But give they dress shit. up as uh, uh, pizza delivery drivers, okay? And so there'll be a, a Domino's guy, a Papa John's guy, a Pizza Hut guy, and like the whole team just has different you know uh, pizza delivery guys. Huh. And one time, uh, my my friend was standing next to the net, you know, one of my coworkers um, at the uh, the old field. Um, he's standing next to the net. And he's watching them play. And uh, he goes over the radio and says, Papa Actual, where the fuck are you? And he's talking to the guy in the Papa John's. That's the awesome. Papa John's uniform. That's it's awesome. Just like, that was the, one of the funniest things I've ever heard. But they do that all the time. They always show up in the pizza uniforms. That's actually, yeah. And by the way, if you guys haven't done it yet, you need to do a Nero's Pizza Guy. Nero's? Yeah, from okay. uh, Home Alone. Okay, I'll Nero's tell them that. Pizza. I'll tell them that. <laughs> they actually make the the jacket and stuff. I almost bought one. If, if when I when I post this, they'll watch it. They'll see this, and they'll do it, and we'll tag you in the picture when it happens. Perfect. One that's, of them the just type, had, that's the type of guys they are. One of them has to have. You got to put a statue up for that guy to run into. Like every time, he just <laughs> knocks it over. And like, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> and then every one of you knocks into that same statue. Please do that. That would make me so happy. They're paintballers, right? No, these are airsofters. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 these are airsofters. So, well, we had, either way, like I said, we had a massive airsoft community there. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of um, some of you guys. They go to the uh, the American Milsim events, uh, but it's a uh, Ghost Frogs. Um, Ghost Frogs. Ghost Frogs airsoft. Fantastic guys. I'd love to have them. If you head. don't know them, you should, and uh, I'm sure they will send you a patch for the wall after this. Are they on and YouTube? They, they are, and they they host events at our field um, at that tanks paintball. They host events um they um, have 300 people um at their events yeah definitely um, check out tanks paintball if you're in yeah. houston and you watch this and you're in houston i doubt yeah, you are absolutely. but that would be awesome yeah and, <laughs> and anywhere anywhere those guys go they're awesome people so yeah there's there's a lot of groups like that you know we've uh 
our our community, the airsoft community, we're pretty blessed to have yep. a lot of eccentric folk. Yep. You know what I mean? Because it's all about LARPing and whatnot. Yep. Um, there is a game coming up that I, I would like to invite you to. Okay. Uh, February 20th, 420, baby. Okay. There is a uh, Wasteland NG. For April 20th? Yeah, April 20th. Okay. Sorry, what did I say? You said February. That's, I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> all right, maybe I've had too many beers. This is this is beer number three I'm going on. All right, maybe uh, maybe I need to cut back. So April twentieth this yeah, year. April twentieth at uh, Wayne's World of Paintball slash Warzone. There's going to be okay. an MGP. Maybe I'll link that my uh, my visit there. Yeah, that'd be yeah. great. I don't know if Deadpool's going to be there though. I hope he. How is he not going to be there for an event? Because it's being hosted by uh, by oh, Wasteland. Okay. They're, okay. I have their patch here somewhere. It's going to take me a minute to find it. That's a good problem to have. Oh, you have a plan with Clips patch. I love, I love those guys. Yeah, I got that at, uh, at a field randomly. Someone just really? gave it to me. I, I had no idea what it was, but I love the color. They're a paintball company, but they are these. They're great people. Yeah, and they're uh, they stand behind the products, and they're very uh, customer forward. Like whenever they're designing a new product, they go out of their way to use like make sure they're using the same sized Allen keys, um, a lot of the same parts and stuff. Yeah. Like they just it's really easy. I can work on guns from two thousand eight because a lot of the parts are the same. That's awesome. Yeah, they're a really great company. Okay, so. well I'm really glad I have their patch now. Yep. Jeez. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, it's a um, it's a wasteland event, which is a role play event, mm-hmm. and I got invited to be a part of the pirate crew. Yeah. But um, when it, I have a thing now, when I go to the wasteland events, I go as the dude mm-hmm. from the Big Lebowski. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. And with this being up four twenty, it's yeah. like, oh god, yeah, I, have to, I absolutely have to go. Yeah. Because. Getting invited to be a pirate, but also the dude at the same time. I could be a pirate dude. <laughs> I'll, I'll be the pirate, I am dude. the pirate dude. Yeah. Where's my rug? Yar. I love that. Yeah, but for that event, I am going to get a rug and uh, have the rival clan steal it, and the pirates. We're going to have to take it back. Okay. And uh, I swear to God, if you guys actually pee on it, I, I'm not touching it. I will not touch <laughs> no, please, it. Please, please don't do that. That will be a literal. That will be a permanent staple there at at, at Wasteland or at uh, Warzone. But uh, I'm curious if um, if paintball has any any games like that because oh, absolutely. Uh, growing up, like my my main mm-hmm. thing with paintball. I don't know if you saw the show Community. Yeah. But they 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 had like every season they ended yeah. it with a big paintball yeah. fight at at the community college campus yeah. and that was all larping constantly. Yeah. Do they have that in in paintball? So very very much so. Um, so the the scenario community. Um, we hear a few different names, big games, but I, I think the scenario uh, community is, is the best one. Um, where they have, uh, it's just like the Airsoft Ops, is what I, I think you guys call them Ops and Airsoft, right? Um, that's what they call them at Houston, at least. Okay. Um, but uh, just the big Airsoft events where you, you're playing the, holy, the, the whole field um, as, uh-oh. What did I do? Press something. Did I break it? No? No, hold on a second. So we're just multi Boom! There we go. All right, I pressed the button with my beer. I'm messing things up. Maybe I need to... <laughs> I think I might need to switch the Are coffee. cut off? No. I might cut myself off. <laughs> But, but yeah, the uh, the uh, scenario games are, are very much a thing in paintball. They're very similar um, to the airsoft events, okay. um, where you you know we're throwing. You have appointed commanders. Um, you have uh, special um, MOSs. You know, like medics and stuff like that. Yeah, um, we call those milsims. Yeah, and yeah. we yeah, so we have milsim events like that, and uh, we we just call them scenario events. And mm-hmm. there's tons of uh, role playing. Some of them are a little bit more milsimy. Some of them or a little bit more role play. Okay. Um, we definitely don't have anything um, like I mentioned earlier, like Milsim West and American Milsim. Yeah. We definitely don't have anything like that. Um, that would be kind of cool though for paintball. I think uh, that's one thing that I'm envious of when I watch those videos on YouTube. It's like holy shit! Like it's super cool. I and mean, that, those are the things. Like I'm a paintballer, but I could admit, like, don't win there. You know. <laughs> I mean, I would be down to play. A paintball game yeah. that was like a milsim, or that was like a, a wasteland game. Any, like I mentioned earlier, uh, Desi and Jenny host fantastic events at their field. Come to any outdoor extreme Orlando game, you'll have a fantastic. Game. I can I can guarantee it. Yeah, so. maybe I'll do that for my mm-hmm. first time. Yeah. Well, the second time I'm going to play at Outdoor Extreme Hudson first. Yeah, 
I'll get a rental and I'll play there. Yeah, and play with the rental at uh, at our field, and we'll make sure you have a good gun uh, for the event. Okay, perfect. Yeah, that'll be much better. Yeah. Where I can this, <laughs> where I can lay down some hate. Mm-hmm. I'm a big target. You know, I get hit a lot. I see all kinds of stuff out there. It yeah, don't matter. So. Oh, I know. That's the beauty of airsofters. Yep. Like we've got airsofters of all sizes. Mm-hmm. We've got teeny tiny people and yep. gigantic people. Yeah. Did you? I know you're not in the airsoft community, but there's a guy that's like seven and a half feet tall or wow. something like that, Jeez. and like he's he's wearing like the the Soviet. Um, I don't know what they call them. It's the the helmet with the faceplate on it. Okay. Where you can't, it's like a metal faceplate. Okay. Like, and he's he's holding this like, like Tarkov, and it he's holding it like this. Yeah. It's 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 like he he can have both pinkies out while he's holding it. And people like people our size are standing next to him, yeah. like look it up, and I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> but to have it someone like that in a wasteland game or something like that would be absolutely amazing. Yeah. It, would, it would add so much realism to it if if your juggernaut was mm-hmm. actually like a juggernaut. So we had a guy at at, at tanks, Dan the Man. I'm sure will watch this. Hopefully. Um, he is, he's an amazing guy. He plays paintball and airsoft. Perfect. Um, he's a killer on the field. One yeah. of those people that I, I love to play against him. And that's, uh, that's a compliment. Yeah. You know, that's how uh, I feel about Slaughterhouse. He's a challenging yeah. player. He's a good sport, you know, and he's a great guy. But anyways, anyways, he, he I love those a, players. a crazy good minigun and a whole like set of armor and stuff and was hosting juggernaut games at, um, at, at tanks for a while. I don't know if, I think he still is. He might may or may not be. Um, but yeah, they were so much fun. Cause yeah. like, he had like the whole setup. It was super cool. That is my plan to get a, a full juggernaut costume, yeah. you know. But um, it's been taking time. <laughs> Starting a podcast, all, all this stuff has cost me a bit of money here. Yeah, yeah. Even though it's kind of a awesome. super cool setup. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's all set up so that it can be mobile. Yeah. Because eventually, I, you know, there are some people that can't make it here. Yeah. That uh, I could meet with. We, that we talked about that when you were at the field, actually. Right. And I, I think your trailer idea is super smart. I yeah, it's super smart. Either a trailer or a camper. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking probably a camper because I want something that I can sleep in eventually. Well, if you go with a camper, it can be your home base for events, right? Whereas if you go with a trailer, you're going to be kind of pigeonholed. <laughs> yeah, um, it's iffy. I mean, they're yeah. There's a guy I know, I call him the toolbox, mm-hmm. or the toy box, I'm sorry. Because, <laughs> like, every time I saw him at Holding Cows, yeah. he just had another new toy. When I saw it, I was like, damn, this thing is amazing. Yeah. Like an HPA 1911. Yeah. Ooh, I love that. But uh, he, he built an airsoft trailer. Yeah. It was fully air-conditioned. He had a, a work, like a tech bench and everything yeah. in there. But uh, it was just a little too cramped for me. Like I couldn't stand up to straighten it. So um, uh, there's a guy. There's, there's a few people in paintball who have done something uh, like similar ideas mm-hmm. and stuff. But one that always stood out to me. Um, they're actually Florida people. Uh, okay. Mad Frogs Paintball. Um, I met them at the Orlando field okay. uh, last March, and uh, they uh, converted a bus. They've got solar panels on the roof. They they live in it full time. Uh, cool. They sold their house and they just travel around and play paintball. That's amazing. It's so cool. It's so cool. And they they were really uh, like we sat there talking with them um, for you know thirty minutes to an hour, and they they really uh, took the time to think out you know full time living. And That's cool. Yeah, I I respect that. I I often cool. wanted to like yeah. buy a van, and just mm-hmm. travel the country and live yeah. in a van. You know, yeah. my grandparents did that where they had a a fifth wheel camper. Yeah, they they drove from Florida all around up to Alaska, mm-hmm. all the way down into Mexico, all the way back to Florida. That's so cool. And like we met them in Mexico, and we I got to go around in a camper in Mexico, yeah. which is one of my favorite That's my cool. favorite memories. You can't do that anymore; you'll get killed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, uh, it's a little, a little different now. Yeah, but we were we were good. Plus, I was with my dad, who's a literal giant. Yeah. He's one of those people that like makes both of us look tiny. Hence the chairs; these were his chairs. Nice. <laughs> yeah, this is a big ass chair. Yeah, they can hold seven hundred pounds. They're they are big boy chairs. But uh, but yeah, Mexico was amazing. And and um, I'm hoping to get back there again mm-hmm. and uh, maybe play some airsoft there. But uh, one of the questions I ask everybody on the show, which yeah. is going to be different for you yeah. because you're a paintballer, mm-hmm. how'd you get into paintball? Well, so paintball for me, um, I played um, 
let's see, I went to a birthday party when I was like 16. Okay. Um, and then when I was 18, I was, um, just kind of looking for something to do, mm-hmm. you know, uh, got invited out, uh, to come to a big scenario game. And, um, uh, it was the first team I joined team Foxtrot. Um, and it was it was an amazing experience awesome. you know um it was you know i was about 18 years old mm-hmm. you know so it was a uh, a difficult time as it is for most men you know <laughs> too many hormones and yeah and too many expectations well i was i was taking care of my dad too who was uh he had multiple sclerosis so he was mm-hmm. bedridden i'm sorry yeah so uh, uh so taking care of him was kind of my life you know i understand i, yeah. I did that with my grandparents when i was at college yeah there's a couple years that like a lot of my friends don't understand why I yep. wasn't around, but yep. yeah, those of you watching now, you know, I yeah. was taking care of my papa and nanny. Yep. <laughs> yep. So I, you I, have to do that. It's, 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 family. it's nature. Yeah. yeah it's family. It's, so, it, it's, it's what separates us from animals. Exactly. You know? Like, like uh, I, I read something one time that, uh, um, some, somebody marks the beginning of like civilization is like the first time they saw a healed broken leg. Yeah. Because it's that that showed that somebody cared for them and kept them alive. I've and never heard that, but that makes total it sense. Is, it's like, holy shit. Cause yeah. right, that, that's a death sentence unless somebody's there to take care of you. Back in the day, yeah, because so, you wouldn't be able to get up and you know, do anything for yourself. yourself. Yeah. So and I, think that was a, I think that was a very uh, astute observation, you know? I think so, too, because that's, yeah. that's kind of what uh, community is. Yep. That's what family is, just kind of looking out for each other. Mm-hmm. Um, so what got you to, um, what got you to Florida to, well, so, operating outdoor extreme? Cause that's kind of a, that's a so, big step. So I, I, I played with, um, I played paintball for a long time, just like as a player. Um, I started off in the scenarios and then I realized I wanted to get better at it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I started getting into the tournament paintball. I was one of those first hybrid players that we talked about earlier. Hell yeah. That's why I, I know for from experience like i was that speedballer in the woods that people were looking sideways at interesting you know okay. because i went into i started in scenarios wanted to get better got into tournaments mm-hmm. and then kind of as that i wasn't able to put the time and effort and money into that anymore because it's a very demanding thing right you know i shifted back to scenarios okay um and then you know i took a, a short break about you know four years um you know life happened yeah <laughs> you know? it happens to all of us man and uh i realized i was miserable i was a very unhappy person i wanted to get back to what made me happy which was paintball right and uh i needed a new job and i was like well if even if this is just temporary i'll go work in this field Okay. You know, um, and that was tanks. So I went and worked at tanks and, uh, you know, six months later I was, uh, one of the managers and four years later, um, we had, we had completely changed the field. You know, the cool. staff was amazing. Um, if any of the staff are watching this, love and miss you guys. Um, and the airsoft community was, we used to do it every weekend we changed it to first and third Sundays every month okay and it went from 10 15 people a day to 200 plus yep on, on those days uh, because people could plan to be there and it was a lot of it had to do with the ghost frogs who I've mentioned already um, and that. other people of course uh, they know Dan who did a lot with the juggernaut stuff mm-hmm. um, all those people helped the community grow and um and, and yeah, so so I ended up uh, leaving there. Um, reached out to Desi uh, because me and my fiance are both uh, uh, good friends with him. Okay, and I played his field uh, in March. Um, I reached out to him and was just like, "Hey, man, like, do you know of anything?" Um, kind of, I was honestly expecting him to offer me a, a job at his field. Oh, <laughs> you know? okay. And he's he kind of actually, <laughs> <laughs> why don't you talk to uh, my partner? That's awesome. Um, yeah, and that's that's Brian and Christy Barno. Yeah, you told me about them. They're and up in. Uh, they're great people. They're up north, right? Yes, uh, they're at one of the Pennsylvania fields, and okay. uh, they're great people. Um, they took a mat. I mean, we all kind of trusted Desi. Desi made it all happen. I trusted that Desi was telling me you know accurate information, and Brian and Christy had to trust that you know Desi was. Um, 
you know, correct about me, the type of person that I was, right. I was capable of. There's um, a lot of trust that goes with that. There's a lot of and, money. And we, know? yeah, <laughs> that's the thing. It's like, so, a lot of money means a lot of trust. They, <laughs> well, they had already decided to buy the Hudson location. But they didn't really have anybody to run it yet, and then I messaged Desi. Oh, so it was just perfect <laughs> so timing. It kind of worked out, and okay. this this facility is a lot, a lot more on my plate than I had at Tanks. I was one of four people um, that helped run Tanks. Okay, um, so it's a lot different here, a lot more on my plate. Uh, but it's fun and exciting, you know? Yeah, you seem to be doing well yeah. with it so far. Like, I haven't seen you, like, overly stressed, but also you haven't dealt with the inundation of airsoft or something. That's my thing. I am I was the I was the weekend kind of guy at, at Tanks. Like, I took care of the staff. I took care of the customers. That was kind of my job. Um, and then we had um, um, the owner and his daughter, who was, you know, was training to be the next owner. Okay. Um, and then there was another manager who took care of, like, field maintenance and stuff like that um and um and, and so i'm good at the weekend stuff like okay. that's the easy stuff you know i can have the, the worst day at a paintball or airsoft field is is cakewalk for me yeah it's really not so, bad <laughs> at least you're not having to talk to lawyers that's the thing like i've, I've worked in a lot of different industries yeah and um i love what I do. What else so, have you done? Um, oof, so um, I've worked at a um, um, like a, a sprinkler company when I was first out of high school. Okay. Um, I took care of my my dad before that. I did that for like four or five years. Um, I worked at a it was a pr- printing shop. We made receipt paper. So like if you've ever been to um, um, like grocery stores and see like the coupons printed on the back, yeah, that's what we did. Interesting. Yeah, and uh, it was it was it's kind of one of those random things. Like well, I guess somebody has to do it, right? Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> but I love I actually love that job. It, it's what uh, gave me an appreciation for like um, uh, making stuff and doing stuff. Yeah, Even though it was something random like receipt tape. You know what it's, I mean? It's random, but it's necessary because we still use it. Yeah, I had I keep having to tell well, people like, now. don't give me a receipt. I don't need it <laughs> for now. Well, for now, yeah. But uh, a uh, lot of restaurants, you can say email me the receipt. Yeah, but then you and have to sit there and type in your. Email. I'm sure that's going to put them out of business soon, but um, yeah, I did that. I don't know, man. I mean, I have a feeling we're still going to be using that. I think we're going to be using paper for a long time. People like it. Maybe. I like it. Well, things change fast. I mean, as you can tell, I mean, I still read books. (laughs) (laughs) I've noticed that. I've had to stop myself from looking over there. It's all right. You're welcome to check it over for (laughs) sure. I mean, I've got a a lot of the banned books because... People were throwing them away. Yeah, I was like, I'll give him a, I'll give him a chance. Yeah. Like, there's, there's one Joseph Conrad book that has the N word in the title. Very off putting, <laughs> <laughs> especially now at twenty, twenty four. Yeah. But it's like, uh, I'll give it a chance because yeah. he, he wrote Heart of Darkness. Man, you never know that that became uh, Apocalypse Now. Dude. Yeah, great movie. That is a great movie. It Greater great documentary movie. though. Like, have you seen? Um, what is it? Uh, Apocalypse Now, I want to say. Yeah. The behind the scenes where Francis Ford Coppola is basically going crazy the whole time. <laughs> I have to see the behind the scenes. So you may want to watch that because that might be what happens to you at running okay. a field eventually. Just, I can see that. You just shave your head and be like... <laughs> <laughs> I've seen it happen. It's time for war. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going crazy. But uh, but yeah, you know, I, I, I often... You know, a lot of people here are probably looking at their airsoft career and saying like one day I might want to have my own field are you interested in ever having your own field that's not associated with outdoor extreme or you I mean it seems like you're in a pretty sweet situation here yeah and that's the thing like there's there's a lot that comes with owning a field mm-hmm. you know I, I've been in the paintball community for a long time you know I've, I've rubbed elbows with a lot of field owners yeah um you know fireside chats before an event you know because i we do the big events the so friday night everybody's camping yep. you know hanging out with the field owners and yep. stuff there's so much that goes on um i have a very easy job in the sense that I get to do the fun stuff. Yeah. I don't have to do the business stuff. That's all handled for me by Brian and Christy. Love you guys. Yes. Um, thank you. <laughs> I, I get to do, uh, like, you know, today we spent all day digging up a, um, um, a water pipe. 
you know, and replacing it. And that's not what I plan to do today. Huh. We spent all day doing it. And tomorrow's going to be something different. And the next day will be something different. And it's always something different. Yeah. You know? You're never going to get bored. Yeah. And you're always going to be busy. And it, it's... <laughs> It's easy, fun work. Like, I mean, everybody's like, it's hard. You know, don't get me wrong. Yeah, it's bad. But, like, working with, working with your hands and getting to play out. I mean, that's what I'm doing. I'm playing outside, you know? Right. <laughs> when, I, when I get to build a field, like, that's, I'm, you know, like, it's like building a fort, you know? I totally get that, man. <laughs> because, like, you're using your imagination. Yeah, exactly. And you're using real-world stuff, too, yeah. because you're like, I, I can imagine setting up a field, yeah. and you just kind of mark it out with tape, and you're like, okay, let me go get 10 guys. Yep. Now we're all going to, you know, get some sticks and we're going to pew pew. Like, like when we were kids, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you get to use your imagination and your hands. Yeah. I think that's fantastic, dude. It, it's so much fun. And, um, and yeah, I do that all the time where like, we'll be, we'll start building a field and then it's like, all right, mandatory walk the field break. And yeah. everybody that, you know, cause we'll have four or five guys build the field, you mm-hmm. know, and everybody will just go walk around for a minute. <laughs> you I know, and, and you just, you, you go to the starting bunker where everybody's going to start mm-hmm. and you just walk around and then you go back to the starting bunker and you go walk somewhere else. You yeah. Know? <laughs> and you can just see all the different angles exactly. and stuff. See if you need to add more yep. stuff. That's what they do at CIA. Yep. You know, the, I, I was there their opening day mm-hmm. and it's almost night and day. That's the indoor field, right? Yeah. Yeah. I've heard really good things about them. They're fantastic. Mm-hmm. There's another one popping up, uh, Gulf Coast Airsoft. I've heard it. it it's hilarious to me that it's called Gulf Coast Airsoft really? because at, at one point in time, I was tasked with creating a airsoft discord um, for kind of like the region. Yeah. And I actually called it Gulf Coast Airsoft. Really? So, yeah. So, when I, when I saw them pop up, it was kind of like, really? <laughs> That's awesome. Great name. That's Definitely awesome. approve of the name, guys. Hey, I, I, can, I can, like, almost like, I can 99% guarantee yeah. you he had no idea that. You oh, no. It was. I don't know. So, we never. <laughs> launch that discord it's just some random discord with me and three other people in it right now like it, doesn't so mean, like it was just some random shit i was going to do it we never did you know so yeah approve of the name that's uh, awesome i didn't i didn't know that they're they're nobody nick, does their nickname is the badlands the badlands yeah okay, okay. and uh, the owner there is another guy i yeah. wouldn't mind you yeah, it's cj he's a great person cj yeah. i definitely want you on the podcast i was gonna have him out here as the first mm-hmm. field owner but he's still waiting to open up the new Gulf Coast Airsoft location, which is basically going to be like CIA. Yeah, it, it's going to have CQB and Speed QB. Okay, okay. And um, I know you weren't it here for like whatever drama, but like he he did post something saying like he didn't want Speed Softers there. And I talked about this with uh, Slaughterhouse, like the moment that well, happened, and he was like, "Look." I get what he's saying. Yeah. He doesn't do. want the bad element. I get it. He wants the competitive yeah. people, but he do, like we don't have a word for these douchebags yet. Yes. <laughs> this circles back to what we were talking about earlier with the similarities with paintball. Yeah. This was the same thing before. When, when, when you would go to a, a woods ball event, but we don't want speedballers here. Right. It's the same thing. The problem is the, 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 what you guys call the Milsim community needs to be a little bit more tolerant and accepting, but... At the same time, the speed soft community needs to grow up a little bit. Right now, it's a bunch of kids, right? It's, for the most part. For the most part, for yeah. For the most part. You have a, your OGs. It's, a younger, like, it's yeah. a younger community, though, right? Right. Give those kids some time to grow up. Give them five or ten years. They're going to be field owners. They're going to be store owners. They're going to be company owners. Mm-hmm. And they're going to be adults, but they're still going to be speed softers. Right. That's what happened to paintball. So... It's it's a matter of I actually lost my train of thought. So <laughs> maybe I need to be cut off. <laughs> it's perfectly natural. But uh but yeah, it's just uh it's just all about you know the, the communities need to figure out a balance. The, the right. speed softers need to be a little bit because I see so many, I, I've yelled at adults for this at tanks. Mm-hmm. You have 40, 50 year old men who are screaming at children. Right. You, because they're better than you at a game. Yeah. Understand that. They're kids. They're going to be better than you. They play differently. But at the same time, the kids need to understand that they're antagonizing a little bit. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because I've, I've, 
we've dealt with that here in the airsoft community. I'm sure you have. It's and the same everywhere. The the great thing, I've talked about it here a couple of times. I am going to make a specific video about mm -hmm. this once I find out more. Yeah. But we had a person who was trolling me, basically, you know, saying he was going to kill me. Yeah. And kill everybody around me. Do a drive-by, basically. Yeah. And this was my first time dealing with any of this kind of drama with these teenagers. Because, mm -hmm. like, I'm, when I was a teenager, if somebody said that, they were going to do it. You know, now it seems like they're just saying that to make their friends happy. Yeah. But he went to a field and ended up basically shooting up a kid horribly in between matches. So bad to the point that he has been charged with assault. He was he be. Uh, yeah, he, he was arrested that day and facing 10 years in prison now. I I completely support that kind of stuff. Like same here. We're playing a game, but the moment you use it as an instrument to hurt somebody, you are outside the rules of the game. You are outside of the agreement of your waiver. Mm -hmm. um, you are now using your toy as a weapon, right? You know, and and you should be charged exactly. You know? And we have seen those people die off. Mm -hmm. Like that that guy. He's Harsh, not an hard, Yeah, anymore. treat harshly. Get rid of them, and they will. Take Take care of themselves. Yeah, yeah, and and you see the ripple effect mm -hmm. because his friends and the people that were formerly on his team, yeah. they kicked him off the team, and they yeah. came to me telling me like, "Yeah, we kicked him off the team." We don't know like, that. Yeah, like we're not we're not down with like trying to kill you or something. Because there was a while where I was I was carrying a real gun to airsoft games. So I was like, "No, yeah. I'm not. I'm not getting caught with you know my guard down." You never know. Not on the field, but like out out in the parking lot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, I'm not bringing a real gun onto a field and having to like. Oh yeah, my don't god! Do that. Please don't do that. Oh my! If I've I'm going to get a million views, it's going to be me pulling out. Pow! Oh I've, god! I've had people. <laughs> I've had people question. Um, like I've had like cops come in and stuff like that. Like when they're off duty, like if you come in, you're on duty, whatever. Right. Um, but like, you know, I've had people come in like open carrying and stuff and I've had to be like, you need to go put that in your car, yeah. you know? And it's and they're like, why? Like, don't you support, you know, second amendment rights? Like, well, fucking of course I do. Well, yeah. You know, but we're here, we're playing with toy guns. There's not really a, you know what I mean? Like, right. you kind of make sure you don't have real guns out, too, you so know? You, you dealt with that in Texas, because we don't have open carry here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, it's, you know, it's kind of the same thing. Like, I would, I would always tell people, like, don't even... I don't like it even when people have their real steel in their gear bags. Yeah. Because that's when not only, it's not necessarily like, of course you're going to know. Right. But what happens when the guy next to you is like, Oh, cool gun, dude. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which happens all the time, especially Absolutely. in airsoft. You'll see it all the time in paintball mm -hmm. and airsoft. Yeah. You know, and that's why I recommend against it or at least having it in a, a zippered compartment that is dedicated to that purpose. Yeah. You know? Cause I'm not going to tell anybody they can't bring it, but it need, you know, do it, do it responsibly. Yeah. yeah. I carry mine in a, it, everybody, most people know it, it's yeah. in my man purse. Yeah. You know, I, I have a man purse I carry yeah. everywhere. Well, yeah, if you're going to keep it on you, that's one thing, just not on the field. Yeah. You know? I'm not, yeah, I don't bring it onto the field. That's, yeah. that's inviting a problem that none of us need. Mistakes in our community. Yeah. You need another one? Yes. So we can, we can both have our last of the six pack here because it seems like we're getting a little weird. <laughs> but, um, so I'm curious, do you have those kind of incidents in paintball where people are just like overshooting people and making videos? Oh, for about, sure. Like, I will say the um, because paintball has kind of paintball uh, ex experienced that issue on a larger scale um, before things like YouTube and TikTok mm -hmm. became an issue. Um, so we were kind of saved from that. Good. Now that I, I, I do think Airsoft is going through the exact same thing, y'all just have different issues to deal with, like the recordings and stuff. Like I think right. we talked about that in the comments on your last video. Yeah. Um, where we had a similar instance with uh, uh, people cre causing an issue um, and then staging a camera to record the after. Yep. You know? That's a common thing. And yeah. it, it was great. I need to, I, I will find out your exact YouTube channel and I will post it here. <laughs> so people can watch your video because I've mentioned it several times. Yeah. He did a perfect job there. He just stood back and recorded the whole process. Yep. He caught the kid walking over, putting the camera down, angling at him yep. to catch the drama for their YouTube channel. Yeah. The, the, what happened with uh, the kid in Houston was it, was, it was a very similar situation. Didn't actually like, like stage the camera like that but they had um, they'd caused an issue um, it was a, a speed soft kid that we'd had problems with before um, and you know it's one of those kids that's he's smart 
charismatic, intelligent, but just decides to be an asshole. Yeah, you know? I don't know. I grew and, up with a lot of those people. And, and, and yeah, so he had done something. I can't even remember what it was. And we called him into the office to, you know, just kind of chew his ass out and yeah. be like, do better next time. Um, and he like stuffed his po- or stuffed his phone in his vest so that it was recording. So that he had the audio at least. So he was sitting there. Uh, he recorded the whole interaction in the office of the of the, the field owner. Uh, you know, just kind of being you know like you know better, like all that kind of stuff. Um, and then he posted it in a video trying to be like, you know, like, oh, 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 like, look at me, you know, yeah. like, I'm edgy and it's just, I'm a victim, but I'm yeah, also so, badass. And he was, he was, <laughs> he was trying to play it as him being, you know, like, oh, I don't care about the, you know, the rules, you know, and it was just like, and, and the moment we called him on it, he immediately removed the video and it's like, you're a coward, dude. You that's, know? that's how, but, well, they don't remove it. They private it. Like, like you said though, um, about the guy, uh, you mentioned earlier, mm-hmm. no longer in the community. Yeah, been blackballed from every almost. I think there's one field that still lets him play, um, and it's just if you act like this community is small, if you act act a fool, you're, you're going to get banned quick. We're all going to. Everybody knows each other. Like that's why. Like I want you to get to know Deadpool and Absolutely. CJ yeah. and, and Danny and Paul. <laughs> like I'm, I'm, I'm just a, a player, but I get to know all of these field owners. Yeah. But I think because of my platform here. Mm-hmm. But if if we keep our communication up, these yeah. people are are not going to be in our community anymore. Absolutely, like all, communication and consistency. So the one thing, like we all deal with this, we all know that. Like, do you have instances in paintball of people being like overshot and freaking out, or people not calling their hits and freaking out? Yeah, you know. Like, um, do you have all the same problems that airsoft has? I've, I've talked a lot about the like where I think airsoft is better than paintball. Mm-hmm. Um, where paintball is clearly better than airsoft is the fact that it's a marking hit. Right. Um, one of my. Um, like it was, uh, I don't want to get sidetracked too much, but yeah, people do definitely um, overshoot. You can get sidetracked. Um, we're, we're just talking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I get sidetracked all the time. It's the same thing, and that's why I think the um, uh, the conflict between the two is is so wild. Like it's the same thing. It you can you can prefer same. one or the other, but like we deal with the same problems. We play on the same kinds of fields. We deal with the same kind of legislation that attacks us. Right. Um, we're all in this together. You know. Yeah, I think it's good to focus on the fact that we are, mm-hmm. we're almost martyrs for the Second Amendment. Mm-hmm. You know, we're, they're going to get us first before they get the guns. They yeah. will. <laughs> they, they will make us stop yeah. playing our sport before they're going to be able to take our guns. And it'll be, it'll be y'all. It'll be airsoft first, mm-hmm. then it'll be paintball, then it'll be real guns. You yeah, know? yeah. And it's just simply because, like we talked about earlier, airsoft looks cooler. You know, yeah. you guys look more realistic. It does look more realistic, yeah. and I mean, we, you know, one of the unfortunate things in the airsoft community is uh, we've had people that take their guns out and try to like use them as real guns and like try to rob people and stuff. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it was in Texas the, <laughs> the last time that happened. The guy got shot. Yeah, that he should be. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he got shot and killed, and they found out like it's an airsoft pistol mm-hmm. that he had. And like. <laughs> Sucks to suck. You pulled a fake yeah. gun in Texas? I mean, yeah. you may as well do that in Florida. You're going to have the same result. But, Absolutely. Um, so have you, you know, speaking of Texas and Florida, like, have you seen any big differences besides, you know? Not so far. Um, like, I, like I mentioned earlier at the beginning, um, everything is very similar. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really, uh, you all have sand instead of clay. Yep. And uh, the, the plants and animals are a little bit different. Our but clay is that, way down. Yeah, we have so much, like, learning to deal with sand has been the biggest learning curve <laughs> of moving here. Because we have a hard-packed clay, and everything from the trees behave differently because of it. Mm-hmm. Like, in, in Texas, you'll run into roots, of course. Right. You know, but you'll have every tree has maybe a dozen thick roots you know so you cut one or two and you can dig your hole and it's not a big deal here oh my god yes it's it is easier to dig it's sand man that shovel goes in easy but y'all have a million little spiders of, of roots you yep. know spider webs well they all got to get the little bit of moisture before yeah. it goes through the same <laughs> exactly <laughs> and it's, that has been the biggest learning curve because it's uh 
we have a lot of trees yeah. at our facility. Thankfully. And uh, so where I look and I'm like, that's an open patch of ground. That should be easy to dig in there. Absolutely not. Nope. So post hole, I will say the post hole digger has been a joy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that works out much better um, than it did in Texas. Yeah. So um, as you get through that root system, it's all gravy from there. Yeah. Unless you hit water. Yeah. Which is very, <laughs> very probable if you go down more than four well, feet. We're on a hill. It's fantastic. Oh, like, are you? The entire property is on a hill. So it, it can rain like torrential downpour, and 90 minutes later, like, and not even 90 minutes, an hour later, there's nothing. Oh, it's beautiful. I was there when it was raining all day, it's and amazing. it wasn't really that bad. It, we, don't, we don't even have standing water. It's like around our bunkers. Like, you know, we're like, like right in front of a bunker gets worn down. Yeah. We don't even have that. That's perfect. We get the worn down spot, but there's no water there because it's all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your your uh, your field Vietnam. Yes, that is an awesome field. That is my favorite part so far. Um, I think the airsofters are going to love it. Oh. Um, for those of you guys who haven't been yet, um, the it's airsoft so field. It's a beautiful piece of property. It's this really cool valley. Um, and you're fighting over the low part in the middle. So there's super long sight lines, um, but there's also um, easy bumps, you know, lot, lots of, uh, we have really big um, um, barriers out there. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's a great field. I think it's gorgeous. Um, it's just, it's just one of those fields. Like you stand at the top of it and you're just like, this is cool. Yeah, yeah. Right when I walked on that field, I was like, Oh, cause I played at a Holy cows for years. Yeah. And it was like, this is what holy cows could be. <laughs> like, that's why I want you to meet, I want you to meet Shelly and Troy. Yeah. Because I don't know, I don't know if they're still the owners there. I've heard that they sold it. Okay. But either way, holy cows, they don't have hardly anything that you have there at, at Vietnam. <laughs> So I haven't been to Holy Cows yet, but I did go to the store, and they were they were the people at the store were awesome. Yeah, Stampede. So. Stampede is probably one of the best stores you can yeah. go to. Gray Wolf Airsoft in Ocala. Okay, is there another store around here? I didn't even know. Yeah, Gray Wolf Airsoft okay. in o Ocala. Okay, uh, they they pretty much just opened a uh, a brick and mortar store. They're fantastic. If you go up there, hit me up. I'll go up there with you. Okay. I'll, I'll make introductions and everything because. Um, it literally, all the owners there, everybody that's there, I want them on the podcast anyway. Okay. So, so that's another reason to yeah. remind them, like, hey, you know, when you're in my neck of the woods, come on, hang out. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, there's not too many brick and mortar stores. It's pretty it's much hard. just Stampede it's, and that. It, it, it's and, hard for any sport, but I, I think especially airsoft. But yeah. I think it's harder for them. So it is. I mean, even you see like Sports Authority. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not around anymore. Yeah. Like all we're left with is Dick's Sporting Goods, yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know, it's it's. I just I what I want is for our community to shop local rather than shopping on Amazon constantly because I have that same problem where I'm like oh yeah let me just Google you know oh, oh, let me just I, I, type yeah. in airsoft gear to see what pops up yeah I'm and, definitely the same way yeah mm. and it's it's not good for our community you know mm. especially when we have these brick and mortar stores are you gonna have um like airsoft guns and gear absolutely we've already started expanding uh, the pro shop that was okay. what uh, uh the project we've been working on recently um was getting up more slat wall um and display counters <sighs> okay. in the pro shop um we're gonna have a whole little area dedicated to airsoft okay perfect yeah definitely get with striker yeah. and, and get their stuff in there yeah we're already in talks with him um, about product and hopefully i can't promise anything yet but i'm hoping we can get the intent worked out as well with him <laughs> So. I am going to pull for that. I'm telling you that right now because uh, Outdoor Extreme Hudson is going to be my whole field. Huh? I'm, I'm going to make that announcement right here because you're 20 minutes away from me and you're finally on my podcast. You're going to be my home field. Awesome. I appreciate it. I'm still going to go to all the other fields. Don't hey. don't worry. I'm still going to go to all the other ones. Yeah. But it's so nice to be able to just drive 20, 20 minutes, minutes rather yeah. than an hour and a half. Yep. I mean, I've got sciatic nerve damage and like one of the few, this is one of the few things I do sitting down for more than a, an hour. Yeah. Otherwise, I have to get up and stretch and whatnot. Yeah. So uh, those long drives are kind of uh, almost a thing of the past. Speaking of which, I need to get up and use the restroom. Go for it, man. You know what? I'll I'll do the same thing. Actually, <laughs> PB break. Yes. Oh man, what is that? Like four beers now? All right. Well, maybe right now is a good time for an ad break. 
So this episode, as well as the podcast, is sponsored by Airsoft Pawn. Be sure to check them out at airsoftpawn.com. Do not post your guns and gear for sale on Facebook or Instagram. You will get flagged. You'll get banned. A whole bunch of other crap can happen. But you can contact them and sell your stuff to them or buy stuff from them. It's very easy. <laughs> you can also see them at uh, most buy sell trade days at your local field. The next one is going to be at uh, Outdoor Extreme Hudson. I want to do a better ad break. Better? Yes. Much better. <laughs> So, uh, I'm curious if there's anything else in your life that's interesting to uh, for all the uh, local airsofters and people to try to get to know you. Like we know that besides uh, paintball and besides outdoor extreme, you like backpacking. But like, what else are you into? Uh, mainly, uh, mainly gaming. gaming? Uh, I play a lot of video games. Yeah, uh, Tarkov. Um, uh, Hell Divers, of course. I've been wanting uh, to play Hell Divers. That looks so, so sweet. Fun. It's so much fun. Uh, uh, I feel like it's going to suck up a lot of my time. Is it on Steam? Yeah, it's on Steam and uh, PlayStation. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have an Xbox and I have Steam. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, uh, do you play any like multiplayer? I guess Tarkov is multiplayer, yeah, right? Yeah, I play Tarkov and. Um, uh, recently, we've been playing Sons of the Forest, which just hit 1.0. Uh, I played and, the forest. Oh, Sons of the Forest just hit 1.0. Oh, it's so much fun. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh. No, I was gonna, I'm actually thinking about starting streaming again. Yeah. And, uh, playing some, some video games and watching some airsoft. Yeah. And probably paintball. Well, that's the thing now. is, yeah, you could do it. Uh, you could kind of do it all. Yeah. yeah. There's really not not many restrictions on streaming nowadays. Mm -hmm. Like, what what other games are you into? Because uh, there's a lot of people out here that play, like, World of Warcraft and stuff man, like I, that. I haven't played an MMO like that in a while. Um, I used to play Albion Online a lot. Um, I played uh, a Foxhole back when it was cool. If anybody knows what that is. <sighs> I have not heard of that. Oh, it used to be an amazing game. Yeah. It, it was one of those games, like, they didn't... Um, they didn't have a clear direction. Um, and I like they those. Kind of ended up doing a bunch of weird stuff. It was a great game five years ago, you know. Um, but yeah, um, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, great movie. Yeah, the game is fun too. There's a game? Oh yeah, dude. It's on Xbox. Ah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's a lot of fun. Um, oh, I, what kind of game is it? Is it one of those like hunter games? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, like there's a, a three killers and four survivors um, or victims. And they did uh, the same thing with Evil Dead. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> they just it's like um. It. You ever heard of Dead by Daylight? It's basically yeah. Dead by Daylight, but Texas Chainsaw. I've been wanting to play Dead by Daylight. I've I've heard about like there's a movie or something like that that's out. I've I've heard I've never played Dead by Daylight, but I've heard there's a lot of balancing issues with it. And I've heard that, that Texas Chainsaw is preferred. Okay. So that's why I've never bothered. I found Texas Chainsaw first. Yeah. I never bothered to even try uh, Dead by Daylight because everybody that's played both is like, don't even bother. <laughs> I love, I mean, I'm a, I'm a horror fan. Yeah. Like that. I talked to Taylor about this. Yeah. We're, we're both horror fans. Mm -hmm. And, uh, like I grew up with Texas Chainsaw mm -hmm. and my interpretation of it is so much different than everybody else's. <laughs> my interpretation of it is that this guy was living in his house and then all these people just started barging into his up. house. <laughs> he's like, what's going on? But he's also a cannibal. So he's like, oh, food. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's funny. But, uh, but yeah, I love the horror games mm -hmm. and that was really big in my, uh, when I was doing some streaming stuff, I, yeah. I just love the horror games, dude. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was one game that I played on Steam called Super Liminal. Did I've you ever play heard, that game? I've heard of that. It was so interesting. Like, I'm, I'm one of those weird, I have weird sleep problems. Yeah. So, um, a lot of those games is like, I totally get that. Like, you, you pick an object up in the air, and it just stays that size. So, you drop it down, it's like, oh, yeah, I, I totally get that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, there's a lot of games out there that I think that... Um, I think that the community kind of would like to 
play together. Yeah. You know, and I guess Tarkov would be one of those. Uh, from from what I've seen uh, in Houston, at least, the Airsoft community loves Tarkov. Really? <laughs> so, See, my VSS up there, when, yeah. I, when I used to play with it, everybody would come up to me like, you you play Tarkov? I'm like, no. I've, I've heard the name yeah. Tarkov, but I've never played it. <laughs> it's, I'm guessing the VSS is a pretty key. It is. It was, it was a meta gun for a while. And uh, I, I think Tarkov's a great game. It's mm-hmm. definitely not for everybody. Um, but it's kind of in a weird spot right now um, where they need to... Um, nobody trusts the game anymore right now. Or is, uh, there was a big cheating scandal. Really? So, it's a fan, I think it's one of the best games in the market. Ground-baking, revolutionary game Yeah. Um, that has set the standards. Like, I think... Like survival games became battle royale games became extraction shooters. Okay, which is Tarkov was the first extraction shooter. Interesting. You know? So I think it's all progression. So Tarkov's groundbreaking, um, but nobody trusts them right now because of the cheating scandal. So, so what was the cheating scandal? I haven't heard about this. Oh, so a guy, um, uh, a content creator, um, bought cheats to catch cheaters. Okay. And basically figured out, and, and he did over 100 raids, and in 60% of his raids, he was able to confirm at least one cheater. And the way he did that was, is so everybody, you know, cheating in video games, wall hacks, right? Yeah, we can um, see through the wall. So he, would, the outline of the he would look at somebody through the wall and do what's called wiggling, which is where you lean left and right, you know? So he would wiggle at people through the wall and wait for them to look at him and wiggle back through the wall. So it's, and that's kind of confirmation that if I'm cheating and I'm wiggling at you, and if you're wiggling back, then you must be cheating too. Oh, uh, so it's and, like, a, like a, a wave for yeah. cheaters. So I, I call it a 60% scandal. Because uh, um, it's, yeah, no, it's not 60% of players, but it's 60% of games. Uh, There's at least one. And how many games was there one that he wasn't able to catch? Probably quite a few. You know, because yeah, it's, it's counting on the cheater looking at you and wiggling back. Yeah, because if I was so, a cheater, I would probably try to make sure that I don't let most know that I'm cheating. He would spend t- 10, 20 minutes harassing people, just following them and wiggling. Following them and wiggling. Them. Really? You know what I mean? Just waiting for them to get frustrated and do it. Or and just like, hey man, I'm cheating yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Basically. You know, because some people would do it right away. Some people would kind of, you know, because most cheaters pretend to be legit. Right. But if they if you give them the secret, you know, the secret wink, are they going to wink back? You know, interesting. <laughs> and that was the whole thing. And it was, you know, yeah, was that a perfect test? No, but he did over a hundred raids, and he was able to get sixty percent of wiggles back. So were all of those people cheating? Maybe not. You know, but huh. he surely missed some people. So I think I think it's a pretty accurate, you know, as accurate as you're going to get without going crazy. Yeah. You know? So, but with so after that, the uh, the community just kind of lost their mind. You know, like how do we dedicate a game? How do we dedicate our time to a game um, that's so punishing? Um, when we're dealing with cheaters, dealing with cheaters. So I get it. It's kind of the same thing with airsoft. Yeah. You know, there's there's I've seen people unfortunately yeah. just drop off after yep. dealing with a cheater. But I know you haven't played airsoft yet. But you know, our basic thing is I like, have played. Oh, you have. I have played airsoft. So and and I, I it's really I I have an informed decision that I enjoy playing airsoft, um, but I prefer having a marking hand. Hey, what it boils down to. You know, yeah. everybody's different that way. And that's the beauty of our sports and that we're able to share a field. Yep. You know? Absolutely. I um I I am going to play some paintball mm-hmm. for sure. But airsoft is always my thing because I'm more of a LARPer. Absolutely. I like to yeah. play pretend. <laughs> <laughs> the real world sucks. That's one of my that's one of my funny things about airsoft is like if you guys would just admit that you're into the LARPing, man, like there's nothing wrong with that. Own it, man. You're, yep. you're, the, the the outfits and the guns you guys build are cool. Yeah. You know, like 
the, the majority it of is. people that I play with yeah. that I, I interact mm-hmm. with, they will be more than happy to tell you they're they're a LARPer. I mean, my buddy uh, Taylor, yeah. he his name is LARP Harder. Okay. Because he yeah. just believes in LARP and hard. Yeah. Because he was a he was a Marine. Like he saw he was in Iraq and Afghanistan. He saw like the horrible stuff mm-hmm. and he comes over here. He's like, no, I just want to play pretend, bro. Yeah, just have fun. <laughs> yeah. I, I I do not want any yeah, of that that's, crap. That, that's like with me. Like I I love going to these scenario games that have themes and you know people dressing up, you yeah. know guys in dresses and stuff. But it, for me, it's all red versus blue. You know, yeah. Or as if you're, I'm sorry, I'm an outdoor extreme field now. We're pink versus yellow now. We don't do red versus blue. Pink versus yellow. Pink versus yellow. You I know do I'll tell you why. Desi, Desi, explain this to me. Why? Colorblind. People that are colorblind can't see red versus blue. Well, obviously, certain types of that color makes blindness. so much sense. And so Desi went out of his way and is. All props to Desi. Desi went out of his way to ask a bunch of people with color blindness, well, what can you see? And so that's why all the outdoor extreme uh, events are pink versus yellow. <laughs> Desi, you a freaking genius. I know, dude. I'm telling you. I lo- like, Desi, what the hell? I love you, man. Uh, yeah, I definitely need you on this podcast to see if you're like, is he in Mensa? Dude, I'm telling you, he's, he's, he's a, a savant when it comes to paintball, mm. you know. I'm so glad that we had and, him and here in Florida. Yeah, yeah. Is he originally from Florida? I think so. Yeah, he's Florida man through and through, I believe. No, 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 no. No, he's not. He's not. Um, he is, but East Coast, I think. Um, oh, I can't remember where, but he isn't from Florida. Please tell me Virginia or Maryland. I want to say it was Virginia. <laughs> like, I, <laughs> right when I met him, I felt this kinship. Yeah. Like, immediately when I met him, I was like, I love him. You gotta You're my buddy. That's just Desi. Desi I know that's just Desi. Desi is the most just all love bundle of energy person that you could ever meet. Yeah. So he's he believes in people. Mm-hmm. He sees the best in people. Um he is supportive of other people. Like he's just a, if you haven't been yet, go go support him at one of his events. He yeah, yeah, definitely go to Outdoor Extreme yeah. Orlando, Outdoor mm-hmm. Extreme Hudson. Cause I mean <sighs> I think it's cool to have an airsoft field that's run by paintballers. I think that's unique. We only have two of those here in Florida that I know of. Besides, well, Clearwater Paintball, yeah. kind of. But, I mean, I feel like they're more airsoft. Well, I think there's there's definitely benefits to having um, a hybrid field, in my opinion. Right. Um, the amount of money you make per player on, on paintball players is, is significantly higher than it is on airsoft players. Because you sell them paint as well, and, right? Yeah, because you guys don't, airsofters don't come to the field and buy BBs. Um, they don't come to the field, and, and it's usually entry and you're done. You we know? will buy BBs when you have striker airsoft BBs. Hey, you know, and, and more more power to the guys that do buy from the local fields. It makes a massive difference. Yeah. Um, I always buy my, my BBs, mm-hmm. my batteries, my gear yeah. from fields if I can. It makes such a big difference and for those of you guys that do it all of the fields are so appreciative of it. You of know, I, I feel comfortable speaking for everybody when I say that. Um, we really appreciate it when you guys do that. Um, most of these fields and stores set their prices to be you know, what is MSRP. Right. Um, support, support, you know. Yeah, that's right. I do all the time. My, um, like I bought this beanie Yeah. and you guys were charging like 15 bucks for it. Yeah. This is a $25 beanie. Yeah. I don't know if you know this. <laughs> other, I have beanies over there from other people that I bought. Same quality. 25 bucks. Yeah. Well, with those, it's marketing too. Exactly. Know? Like this, your pro shop was fantastic because, um, I, I have this weird like mental thing where I think like people are setting me up sometimes but <laughs> when I walked in there you had two X like all two X's like right there in front of me to buy and I was like no I'm not spending any money but I bought this beanie because I was like oh, I can't help it man and um, you know once you're I, I really do think that once your uh, once your pro shop gets better yeah. once you get more you know more product and whatnot people will be buying from you there because I know that I'm not the only person that prefers to buy in person you know Amazon is fun but it's way better to pick up the actual gun they don't give a support right and it's way better to support the field you know so uh, I'm curious what your your plans are for outdoor extreme Hudson just like do you have general? any big 
big plans or oh. any big events coming up besides what Striker might be doing? Well, adventurers, the audio cut out right before we got to hear about the new events that are popping up at Outdoor Extreme Hudson. Although they really should be calling themselves Outdoor Extreme Hudson. Either way, I figured out the issue and we're going to be moving forward pretty smoothly from here on out. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next episode featuring Holiday and Mini Dom.